Hi everyone. Take a look at this picture again. We saw it with our last read aloud. Do you remember what this is called? This is the human cell. This is the smallest building blocks of all life. What are groups of cells that perform the same job called? That's right, they're called tissue. The next image I show you is an example of muscle tissue. This is an image of muscle tissue. The next image I'm going to show you is of the human heart. We could recognize this pretty easily. It's one of the most important organs in your bodies. It's the heart. A person cannot live for very long when the heart stops functioning. So far, you've learned that cells form tissue, and today you're going to hear about what tissue forms. I want you to listen carefully to what comes next. But before we begin reading our story today, called Organs, let's take a look at a few of the words that we're going to see. The first one is collapse. Collapse means to fall or to cave in. This next word is transplant. Transplant means to move something from one place to another. The next three words that you hear are words that you should add to your vocabulary books. The first one is kidney. A kidney is a pair of abdominal organs that helps to clean the body's blood. Kidneys. The next word you should add to your vocabulary books is liver. The liver is a large body organ that secretes juices to aid in digestion. Liver. And the last word that I want you to add to your vocabulary books is nourish. Nourish means to provide with food or other substances necessary for growth. So let's get ready to hear our story today. Remember, I want you to listen and hear about what tissue forms. Listen carefully. In the last read aloud, you learned about cells and tissues. Similar cells join together in groups to form tissues. In the same way, similar tissues join together to form organs. Organs are parts of the human body that perform special jobs for the body. Organs are made up of group of tissues. All organs are made up of different kind of tissues that help them to do their jobs well. Can anyone name one of your body organs? Your eyes and ears are organs. Your heart and lungs are organs. Your stomach is an organ too. Which of your body organs is the largest? It's your skin. Does that surprise you? You've looked at your skin cells through the microscope, and we've talked about the epithelial tissue that these cells form. So, while it may seem odd to think of skin as an organ, it does make sense, doesn't it? Strong epithelial tissue, also made of tiny cells, forms an organ with a very large protective covering, the skin. You've learned about four different types of body tissues in our last read aloud. What are the names of all four types of body tissues? One is epithelial, the tissue that forms your skin. What are the other three? The other three are connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. Each different type of tissue is made up of similar cells that do the same jobs. All body tissues are made up of cells, and all body organs are made up of tissues. Cells, tissues, organs. The systems of the human body are organ systems. An organ is the part of a body with a clearly defined function or job to do. Most organs are involved in just one body system. There are 10 major organ systems in the human body. What body systems are in charge of helping you move? Last year, you learned about the skeletal and muscular systems. Your skeletal system is made up of bones and other organs. Its skeletal tissues work together with the smooth muscle tissues in your muscular system to make your body move. What does the circulatory system do? It circulates or moves your blood all around the parts of your body. Your heart and blood, made up of cells and tissues, are the organs of your circulatory system. The respiratory system includes your lungs, organs made up of cells and tissues that control your breathing. What does the nervous system do? It sends messages along the spinal cord to the brain. These two organs, the spinal cord and the brain, are both made up of the nervous tissues, full of tiny nerve cells. 
Which organ system includes your stomach? Yes, it's the digestive system. Your stomach works closely with other organs, each made up of different types of tissues and different types of cells to perform different types of jobs. Soon, you will be able to name all of the other organs that work together with your stomach to help digest or break down your food. Sometimes your organs are a combination of different types of tissue. The stomach is one of those organs. It is made up of many layers, including all four main types of tissue. These tissues play a very important role in the digestion of your food. We'll take a quick peek at part of your digestive system now. Let's look at the inside of your stomach to see where these four types of stomach tissue live. From inside to the outside, the first layer of tissue that you see is the epithelial tissue. Remember what epithelial tissue does. It is tightly packed, arranged in a layered sheet to cover and to protect the organ. Beneath the epithelial tissue is the connective tissue, primarily blood that carries or connects nutrients to the cells. Smooth muscle, lies, sm smooth muscle tissue lies underneath the connective tissue and helps to move food around in the stomach. Stomach muscles squeeze together about three times per minute, continuing to squeeze whether there is food in your stomach or not. It is the squeezing of these muscles that produces those loud rumbling noises you sometimes hear when your stomach is nearly empty. The fourth type of body tissue is nervous tissue, and it's located inside the stomach wall. It constantly sends signals to the brain and makes sure that all other parts are working smoothly. Every organ in your body depends upon other organs to work in the right way. When you study the digestive system more thoroughly in the next lesson, you will see that the stomach could not perform the job of the entire system on its own. It needs help. Have you ever heard of the liver? Your liver is an organ located above your stomach that your stomach depends upon to do its job. Together with two other organs known as the pancreas and the gallbladder, the liver produces digestive juices to help break down your food. Your liver is one of the largest organs of the body, working as part of several different systems to perform different body functions. You cannot live without your liver. Next time, you'll learn more about the very important role that your liver plays in the digestive system. Organs depend on one another, so do the body's systems. Each system depends on the other systems to make sure that your body works properly. For example, Blood is carried to all parts of your body through the circulatory system. The circulatory system depends upon the respiratory system to get oxygen into the bloodstream. Your blood would have no nutrients in it without the help of the digestive system to break down your food. Working together, these different systems provide your cells with food and oxygen they need so that energy can be supplied to all of your other systems. Without energy, your muscles couldn't move your bones. Without energy, your brain could not think. When organs stop working properly, body systems break down. The body stops functioning well and you become ill. If your lungs collapse or cave in, there's not enough oxygen to feed or nourish your cells with the things they need to live and grow. If your heart stops, it will no longer pump blood with the necessary nutrients to the other parts of your body. When you're doing things like riding your bike or playing certain sports, it's very important to protect your head by wearing a helmet. A head injury might result in damage to your brain. This might prevent messages from going back and forth between the brain, the nervous system, and other parts of your body. A donor is a person who donates or gives something. Have you ever heard of an organ donor? Well, believe it or not, an organ donor gives away an organ to save another person's life. Fortunately, modern science has made it possible to replace damaged organs. Sometimes when people are very ill but still have a healthy body, but still have healthy body organs, they decide to donate their healthy organs to others when they die. Sometimes it is even possible for people to spare an organ to go on living healthy lives themselves. For example, you have two kidneys. Kidneys are a pair of organs in your lower back. You'll learn more about these two very important organs in another lesson. Your kidneys clean poisonous waste from the blood flowing through the body, preventing many different types of disease. You can live a healthy life with only one kidney, 
So this is one organ that can be donated to someone who needs a kidney. Doctors today can take a kidney from one person's body and transplant it or move it to another person's body to keep him or her alive. Doesn't that sound like a miracle? I think so. Cells, tissues, organs, systems. The body is organized into four different levels. Cells are the building blocks of the body. Without cells, there would be no tissue, no body organs, and no body systems. In fact, without cells, there would not be a single living person on thing or thing on earth. The next time we gather together, we'll discuss the organs that work together to digest or break down your food. Today, we looked inside your stomach, but your stomach is only one part of the food's journey as it travels through your body. Can you name any of the organs that belong to the, di to the digestive system? With your help, we'll put that puzzle together soon. See you next time.